this is the uh, uh, the inside of the financial report we were just we we're just looking at when I ran in, in Sage 300 and uh, this is the spec area okay, of the report and it's here where we designed the report now this looks a little cryptic but it's not anywhere near as bad as you might think once you once you gain an understanding of how this how this stuff works you'll see uh, you'll see what I'm talking about now um, down below is where the report is generated okay. so the spec area is here the report area is down below and this report area is what it shows on the screen when you run it okay. now I'm going to talk a little bit about how this what, what, what all these specs mean um, and there's actually um, up here under FR you know, we go to add-ins FR I have FR help which is a help screen about the financial reporter and the statement designer and you know designing financial statements and so on there's even a uh, 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 tutorial down here the, the short tutorial about uh, the design of the product so that's a helpful little uh, help screen if you want okay. now so what does it, how does this work well there's two basic concepts. Um, one is, from the column standpoint, coming down the column, this is deciding what information we want to capture from the general ledger. Okay. So that's, that's basically coming down the columns. The row information is telling me what accounts do I want to cap take that information from. Okay. So this is telling me the accounts. This is telling me what I want from the accounts. Okay. And I can have many, many columns. I can have as many columns as I can fit on a piece of paper or that, uh, you know, depending on the size of the print you're accustomed to. Now, so uh, that being said, I've got up here under this column, I've got, uh, now this is, the, this is in my default, what is called the default report uh, row, if you will, right here. I've got a formula that says FR standing for financial reporter amount net year to date. Okay. So this these formulas, by the way, are part of what is installed in Excel as part of the financial reporter. And uh, I can actually run a product, run a process from in here called FR paste. I'm, I'm highlighting this uh, guy right here, and that's what this formula is in there. And I'm going to prepare an FR paste, and it brings up this screen. And this screen is uh, is used during the design of the of the report and modifications. Now, if I look at FR AMTA I, over here, these are uh, from this particular part. These are the various pieces of information that I can capture from an accountant. And I'm talking, uh, if you look at it, you get balance, current period, last period, so many periods ago, so on and so forth. So you get all the balance information, and then you get all the net, the net amounts of information, too. Okay? Uh, net amounts typically used on the, uh, on the, uh, the income statement. Now, and, and the one that we're actually using at the moment is down here, and it's called net year to date. Okay, so uh, this is this is how we decide. Now, if I if I select this, it's actually building the formula down here. You can see it. Now, this is the same formula that's already in here, but uh, that's that's what I'm building, and I can paste it into that cell. Now, it's already there, so I don't need to. But the point is, is this is this is where we capture the information that we want to put on the on the, on the report. Now. Uh, other things that I can capture from, I've got FRACCT, well, that's the actual, the account master, and here I have the account ID, the account number itself, the account description, the type of account, balance sheet, income statement, and so on, and there's a whole bunch of stuff about the account that I can put on the report, or that I can use as a form of selection criteria, okay, so, and among other things I have, I also have the, um, um, formatted account number. Now, 
over here is another, this is the sun at same account row. Okay. Over here, it's, we have from FRACCT that we're just looking at, and this is the formatted account number. Okay. Uh, over here, FRACCT, account description. Well, so this is telling me that this column is going to contain the account number. This is going to contain the account description. This is going to be the net year to date, whatever that is when I run the report. I was running it for period 5 of 2019, so that's the net year to date, five, five account periods. Over here, we have a formula. And the formula is basically uh, calculating that um, percentage of sales. And this is, and this is uh, there, there's no financial reporter information involved here. This is, that's just the, uh, an Excel, an Excel formula. Okay, over here, we have now th this, these columns right here, starting at column E to the right, is the actual um, uh, contents of the report. Okay? And if I go down, you can see we're starting here, going over. Okay, now. Um, these four columns, these guys right here, A, B, C, and D, provide information about, again, where we're getting the data from, what account numbers we're taking it from, and some other formatting information. Okay, so this right here, this is a, like, a, like a wild card, a couple of percent signs. Uh, other items that we might put in this form, in, in this cell, might be the range of account numbers. I can actually type in the range of account numbers if I want to. Now, uh, this is this is telling me I want to read all the accounts across the entire chart. Okay, that's what that means. Now, this column B is a limiting factor. In other words, this is this tells me I want all accounts. This tells me I want to of all those accounts I only want to look at or report the ones that are uh, in account group 15. Account group 15 is the um, is the revenue account group. Okay? And I can have multiple ones. If I go down here, I can see that there's actually two account groups. It's this or this account. If I go down further, oh, I guess that's the biggest one. No, there's the, this figure actually has four account groups. So I can include multiple account groups. Hey, now, can I ask a question here? Yep. With that, can I say equals account group whatever and segment whatever, segment value, I think is the term? Yes. Yes, you can. How does that build? I've tried to build it multiple times, and I get errors every time. Well, what would that formula look like there? Yeah, what's the syntax? How does it read? Uh, if you wanted to include, uh, well, I mean, this uh, we can we can add it for the account groups plus uh, limiting segments yeah. uh, for, for a particular line if you want. Uh, and I, I I mean I can I can maybe show you how that works, but um, I want to stay on track where I'm going because that's fine. I, I if you just want to keep that in mind, it's it's right here at this portion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now, the the uh, the idea is that uh, this is telling me for this line um, what uh, uh, accounts basically I want reflected here. Now, um, so these tell me what I'm going to put in these columns. Now, um, this is just text. It's just the you know the prints down below. These guys they have these uh, backslashes. Now, these backslashes basically are kind of like a pointer. It says, I want you to use whatever formula, first formula I bump into as I, as I look up. So if I go up the screen, use the whatever formula, the first formula I come in, I, I come in contact with, which would be this one. Okay? Now, I could take this formula and put it down here too, but I don't have to. I could just... Uh, put a pointer up to the formula above, so I don't have to fill the, the spreadsheet full of uh, formulas. Now, because 
this is this single line is looking at a, a group of accounts, count 15. When this when this specification is read and the report is generated, this line actually generates into all these lines down here. Okay. So because it's looking at all the lines, all the, the accounts that belong to the account group. All right. So this actually this line actually expands into multiple lines, as does this one down here and the others. Okay. So one line of spec generates into a whole bunch of stuff down below. Now, this column, column C, the only thing you see in this column is Z or nothing. Okay. And the Z basically is telling me if the account numbers, if the account's uh, values are zero, I want you to eliminate it. In other words, suppress the zeros. Okay. This column is telling me how I want um, the data selected. And uh, I can, if I were to take, uh, well, I'll show you real quick. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this. This is set to detail by account. And while I'm inside the designer, I can run FR view, which is this screen that we looked at a little while ago. And if I hit OK, it generates and rebuilds the report. So I was up here, and it rebuilds the report down here. Okay. So this is saying detail by account number, which is the first segment. Okay. So it shows me the account numbers here. Okay. And uh, it's showing me all these have values. If I were to go up and take this Z out of there, run it again, you'll notice that I get all the revenue accounts, but these have zeros. Okay. Those are suppressed because of, of that Z. Okay. Now, um, this detail by account number is basically showing me if I look down here, you can see that this is just, it's showing me just the account number itself, not the uh, segments. If I go up here and I change this, and this would be different depending on what you call the cost centers. If I change it to that, now if I run this, now you can see I get the accounts and the division segment. Okay. So, no, no, so, I, so this actually got a bit, a bit longer because before I was just looking at account 4,000 and it summed these three. Okay. Now I'm looking at the account 4,000, but I've got the additional segments. If I change this to region, again, this is what sample data calls it, of course. But okay. Now, if I run it again, Now we've got the region segment, too. Okay. So uh, the, these all combine. You know, and we've got the region segment and, and the division segment, so it includes them both. So anyway, so that, that's what this guy is all about. Now, if I were to take this D and change it to T, that means total. I want to consolidate. So now, when I run it, I get one line. Okay. Now, the description here, the, the, the description is missing uh, because uh, there's, you know, the, this is actually the, uh, um, because it's combined, there's not a single account number and the description is, uh, is uh, uh, not reflected. So what I would do if I was going to use this I would tend to put in the description here. You know? So because I, I'm consolidating it all, I might say this is, you know, sales, as an example. If I did that, now I have the word sales, you know, not next one says a description. Okay. So okay. It, the point of this is, is if Now it shows in full detail again. Okay. 
and it's and, and it includes. I haven't specified by account or by region or by segment uh, by any of the segments, so it's just including all, including them all. Okay. Now I'm going to put this back. To it. Now other little pieces to this is over here. I've got that over here. I've got that same slash. It says, "Look up here to my uh, to my formula." first formula I bump into. So this means I'm going to replicate that year to date for each one of these lines. Okay. Now you also notice that this this guy, although it might be difficult for you to see, there's a, there's a minus sign next to it. Okay. The minus sign, um, revenue entries are credit entries in the accounting world, which uh, means they're in, in the computer world means they're negative. And what this does, what this negative sign does is it reverses the sign. So of, the, of what uh, what it, what it comes out of the system. So it changes it so these are all positive numbers for the sake of the report. Okay. Another item out here is we have a summary. This is an Excel formula. Summary of G14. Okay, well, remember I said this line actually develops into a whole string of lines. Well, by putting this formula, sum of that of that cell, this actually expands into the sum of this whole group. Right down here. So I'm doing a, a summary calculation for you. Okay. Now, looking at this um, division, I mean, excuse me, this. Uh, uh, percentage of sales, uh, if I were to look at that formula, it's taking this uh, and uh, oh, it's taking, yeah, it's taking the, the summary and dividing it by the uh, by the line amount, then multiply it times 100, which that's what's giving us our percentages. Okay? So that's what that's doing now. So the idea is that um, as it works its way down the spec, you know, it pulls different groupsing of accounts from over here. Okay. Uh, in general, it's using the same formula going down the screen, current year to date in this case. Although down here, you'll notice that this formula is balance open. This is not year to date. This is balance for the current period. Now, uh, the reason why this is taking place is because this grouping right here. 16, 17, and 18 are for people who use periodic inventory as opposed to perpetual inventory. Okay. Um, in other words, the uh, uh, this is actually the beginning inventory, this is purchases, and this is the ending inventory for the period. So that's built into this income statement. If you don't use periodic inventory, then I could actually remove these lines. It wouldn't wouldn't change anything. Uh, this is just this is recording the cost of sales. That's uh, uh, group number 19. Okay. So um, now uh, cost and expenses. Again, you can have more many many groupings for cost and expenses. The uh, sample data just has this this one big cost and expense grouping. Um, there that it does have some other income and expenses down here. Now you notice that. Um, uh, and if we look at this up here, we see that other, under other income and expenses, we're reversing the sign so that the revenue numbers show up as positive and the costs show up as negatives. So that's, that's, that's the reason why they did that there. And then we have corporate taxes. So, so that's basically um, how this stuff works. I mean, it, it, it uh, reads the formulas in the columns, and it reads the source of data from the left on the rows, and it fills it out. Now, um, other things that we can do here is I can add uh, additional columns. It's a fairly simple matter to add additional columns with other data. Or I could change this column to reflect different data, too, and make a different report as a result of it. Now. One of the one of my favorite little guys is um, under F R paste is 
But this guy here, FR Tran, T R N A, I always use the A type. Now, what that means is it's uh, it's actually looking down to the transaction level, and I'm going to put the same information, excuse me, same net year to date, except I'm using FR Tran instead of FR AMT. Okay. I'm going to paste that now. So what I did is I just changed this, and this is only changing for the revenue and uh, the cost of sales. Below is not changing, so, so I'm going to, but I'm, I'm going to run it so you can see what it does. Okay, now same information, but you'll notice that these guys have little red arrows. Now, what that means is it's actually stored information under the under the comment area. And this is a uh, drill down, okay? Now, if I go to here and I uh, right-click FR, financial report of drill down, this opens the drill down in the GL inside of, inside of Sage 300. Now, uh, I can actually click on this and drill down to the entire GL entry. I press this button, it drills down to... This is an accounts receivable invoice, so this is the invoice. And, it, and because this invoice originated in order entry, I can drill on this, and it will bring me to the actual invoice inside of Sage 300, showing me all the products that were sold and so on. Okay. Now, all of that is taking place from then the statement. So I'm in the financial reporter, and I can drill down to the, to the source ledgers from here. But that's a uh, that's a, uh, uh, a powerful tool, actually. Now, this is actually uh, when when it generates the report, it actually uh, is reading all the transactions that you're asking for. If you have a uh, a large general ledger, which many people do, and there's a lot of transactions, and this report might take a little bit to generate, but um, I, I I still think it's worth it. Now, other things about that is this formula up here, I can actually uh, build a formula that includes this net year to date, but I can limit it to not only uh, um, uh, the transactions for the accounts selected, but I can also tell it that I want to uh, limit it to a date range. Now, because I'm going down to the transaction level, limiting the date range, um, of those transactions, I can um, actually produce income statements. By, and I've done this for people. I, I, you can produce an income statement for that is based on the week as opposed to the month. So, um, you know, retail operations sometimes like that type of stuff. Okay. Now, Excuse me. that's one. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I have a question on that. Um, yep. Do you need to have Sage access to do the drill downs? If I send this to a manager who doesn't have Sage and access, are they still able to drill down? No, the, the only way you can access the drill down is if you um, I, you actually have to open the spreadsheet from inside the designer. Uh, here, I'll show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Um, Let's see, I'm going to save this one as it is. I'll show you what I'm talking about so it's clear. Close the designer. Now, I'm going to go on to print financial statements, and I'm going to print, I'll just uh, print it to file. And it's going to put it there, that's fine. Oh, this is creating the financial statement. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It just saved it. Okay. Now, um, if I were to open up the file, and it's over here under uh, users, I put it under user admin, and it's this guy right here. Okay. I'm going to open that. Here's my financial statement, and it's got 
this here, I've just opened it in Excel. Okay? And right. you'll notice that the drill down doesn't exist. Right. Although the data is there, but the drill down doesn't work because I'm not inside of SAGE 300 when I do that. If I do this, I go over to the statement designer. From inside of SAGE, and I open open that same report, and it's uh, our user admin. This guy right here. Now I've got the same report open. Now you notice there's no specifications in this report. This is the, this is the resulting report. Well, now I can drill down. Okay. Now. And the reason why that works is because the add-in is installed inside of Excel when you run it from inside of when you when you run the statement designer from inside the, uh, the report. So inside Sage, rather. Right? That's why. So I have, to have, I have to have Sage and have access to the designer in order to use that function. Right. Well, exactly, and um, and. Uh, part of the reason why it, it is that way is because you have to have access to the database. When you're drilling down, you're actually drilling into that into that that SQL data. So, okay. Now I'm gonna hop back in here again. Now. Other things that I can do here is I'm going to add uh, I'm going to add another report, another uh, column rather. And uh, generally speaking, the one of the uh, uh, well, let's see. I'm going to add this. I'm going to change this again. And oops, we go to my paste. I'm going to go back to the FRAMTs, and I'm going to uh, eventually, you know, maybe I'll leave it on the trend. And I'm going to get net, and I can say last period, current period, or I can say uh, uh, a specify a period, okay? a period number. Okay. Now, if I do this, down here it's saying uh, net period one. I could also select a different period, I can say, well, I want a period five or whatever. Okay. So every time I change what period number, it changes the formula. Okay. I'm going to change, I'm going to leave it on period one for now, I guess. Okay. And I'm going to paste that in there. Now, when I do that, I'm going to change, uh, and I, I should probably change it down below too. Uh, under This guy here. I'm a, uh, yeah, this one. All right. I'm going to change that to the same thing. And paste. And period number one. Paste that there. Now, when I run this, even though I'm running it as a period five, I specified within the report that I only want to see period one, and these this this information is just period one information now. And in fact, uh, if I go to the drill down, you can see that all the entries are from 2019 period one. Okay. Now, so why does it say period? Why does it say period five in the title? And how is that? That looks very confusing for a user. Well, um, the reason why I would, I'm going with this is I'm, I'm going to change this to uh, January. Okay. Now I can insert. Uh, I'm going to insert a column here. Oops. Yeah. Uh, you have to insert uh, before percentage of sales column. This over here? You have to insert columns before that in order for it to pick it up. Is that correct? Right. Right. I mean, this is... You, I, you I guess what, a I'm, 
may after a percentage of sales column in column K, it wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, this would be percentage of sales just for January in this case. I understand, but if you wanted to add data in column K, it would not yeah. pick it up. You have to insert columns. Uh, I would have what? to change the formula to do so. Cameron? I'd have to change the formula to, I, to, to use the other columns. I if I wanted to include percentage. parameters, huh? Mark, is that correct? I'm sorry? What, what kind of parameters? The print parameters. You're saying it won't show up in the report. Your question is, oh, It doesn't even work when you put it outside of that, I think. Are you talking about the print area, though? No. No, uh, I put in stuff in column, like column K, uh, it's outside of the area that you're using and it doesn't generate any information. It's, it's strange. But it's a print anyway. area problem. Yeah. No? I don't think so. Anyways, the, all right. The, the way this is to set right now, in fact, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. this is still calculating the percentage of sales based on this column. Okay. Correct. Now, if I if I wanted to, um, if I wanted percent, where I was going with this report is I was going to take this guy right there, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You're going to have January, February, March, April, May. All right, I'm going to put that over here. This changes to February. This formula, I can actually change that to period two. And I want to change it uh, down here to, uh, let's see, this one here, I think. Yeah. So um, if I do that, now when I run it, Uh, not, not a lot in period two, I guess. Huh? Well, let's do this. Let's uh, now. I'm gonna do one more. Oops. This is just an example of of um, some of the things you can do. I mean, I'm not um, trying to do all all possible things here, but uh, I'm gonna change this to period three. And I'll change it down here to change that to three. Now, if I run this now, I should get three months. There we go. February, for whatever reason, doesn't have much in it. So now I've got uh, period one, two, and three. Okay, this column is still based on this column over here. These aren't these aren't included in that calculation just yet. Okay. Now, if I wanted to have percentage of sales included in the total, then I would tend to put a net year-to-date column in here too. In fact, uh, uh, another thing to note is now I've got period one, period two, and period three here. Okay. Well, I'm going to run this, except this time I'm going to run it as a period two. So I only get period one and two. Three gets cut off, doesn't get eliminated. So the idea is if I built this report with all 12 months, with a total at the end, whatever I use for a counting period up here, it includes that many columns. And it includes in that year to date at the end too. So uh, I actually have an example of this. Um, is there a formula that will add up January, February, March and put that total in without doing a year-to-date? Because year-to-date is now... Well, you have a couple... Yeah. You have a couple ways of doing this. You can put in a... You can use a column which includes the year... You know, put a column at the end or at the beginning, for that matter, uh, with the year-to-date information. Or I could take and build a formula up here. For instance, I could go, um, let's see, I'm going to answer another comment real quick. Uh, I could put a column 
put a, a formal in here, which is equal to. Let go back to Why did you insert a column? Why didn't you just put that in, like, uh, column L? Some of the three columns in front of it. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know. Uh, again, again, a, a um, um, there, there's different ways of accomplishing the same thing, but uh, you can even put a formula here, which adds up the other columns. No, uh, for what's reported. You only have to put no. it in the top one there. Do I what? You only have to put that in the top uh, line in the top uh, row. Right. In other words, this is this is a formula, and then I put in my uh, uh, slash. Right. Okay. Yeah, but I put my slashes in and so on. So when, it, when, when I run that, now this is only going to be for the revenue side, but right. um, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to put it out to three again so I get all three. Okay. So now, I didn't format it right, but basically this number is these, plus, you know, these, the total of these three guys here. Okay. I have to adjust my signs and so on to be accommodating. Um, Oh, actually, uh, actually, that negative sign was not appropriate because I was adding up positive numbers. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I, I actually have a uh, uh, an example of this. Now, one of the other things about the drill down, by the way, which um, is a little different than the drill down directly in the GL. If I go over to the general ledger, I'm going to look at uh, count four thousand. Let's say, if I go into the general ledger. And I look at my chart of accounts, and I go to account 4,000, and I'm at period 5. And I click on transactions. This shows me all the transactions, period 1, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, shows me all the transactions from the beginning of the year forward. Okay. Inside Can the financial statement. Can you run that with just one month, like... April or whatever, do you have to get all transactions for the year? Well, over here, uh, yeah. under this, uh, in the, in the uh, drill down inside of the GL, uh, right. you are, it, it's always going to show you all the transactions up to the, up to the month that you sh selected. I can't pick a month? Yeah. Not, not in here, but in the, that's where I was going, inside the financial statement. All right. When I drill down, I'm seeing just for that month. You know what I mean? So, that, so in that sense, it's, 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 a, it's a bit different. So Now, um, I actually have a, uh, I'm going to close this one. Uh, uh, yeah. Close that, I guess. I'll save it. Now, um, back in the uh, financial designer. I have another one out here called, uh, let's see, here. Now this one is a similar report. It doesn't list the account numbers, but uh, it does have all 12 months plus current year to date. Now if I run this, oops, add in you. I run it as a period five. Yeah. Column could be a little bit wider. You can see that it only shows me first five periods, and this is the total for the first five periods. And this percentage of sales is, is actually based on this. I have a question. Yes. Can you can you are there formulas to pull the budget instead of just actual so that you could do this exact report and have budget for June through December? Yep. You can actually uh, in in here uh, as an example. See, this is a uh, uh, period. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my FR page, and among other things, this one uses the FRAMTA, and uh, one of the things I can choose, and I'm using period one, uh, whoop, period, net period one. Now over here, I have something called fiscal designator. 
And under fiscal, you see the formula down here. If I'm, it's the same as what's on there right now. But over here, I have actual, provisional, quantity. Quantity is actual, quantity is provisional, and I have one, two, three, four, five. These are the five possible budgets inside the general ledger. So if I were to choose budget one, now you can see that it looks exactly the same. It's FRAMTA net 1P, but it's got the number one ahead of it. Okay. So and if I place that now, this if it's if there's a if there's a uh, budget in there, I don't know if I have a budget, but we'll find out. And a few and no, it's the same way. Yes. All right. So these have budgets. Okay. In fact, I'm going to confirm that. And uh, if I go into my accounts. Oops, that's not where I want to be. Uh, budget maintenance. 4,000. Yep. So, budget number one for 2019 has these numbers in there for budget. So, and that's what that's showing me. Okay. Now, this is this is summing up the budgets for all the sales accounts because I'm uh, producing this and in what detail does the by Q account. Count? What does the quantity do in Q? I'm sorry? What does the Q quantity do? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. But um, The Q, the, the letter Q quantity? Oh, quantities. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, what does that do? Well, I'll, I'll show you. Um, in fact, Maybe I'll, uh, I'm going to close this report and go get the different one. Let's go back to get that other one for a minute. I'll get my income statement one. Okay. All right, now, um, in SAGE, under accounts, and I believe uh, you can set it up as any way you want, but for instance here, an account, uh, 4010, account 4010, is set to maintain quantities. Okay. Now, uh, when you maintain quantities, you've got to tell it what you know, the measure is. And, these, and you can set up any of the accounts to maintain quantities. Now, what that means is, is it's possible to store statistical information against that account. Now, um, and what it is, what that statistical information is, is depends on who set it up. Okay? Now, um, you know, this this each quantity, well, maybe that's uh, maybe that was meant as uh, to record the amount of orders of, of that many product or how many of those we sold or what have you. Um, you can also do things like uh, record uh, the number of employees working. The square footage of the buildings that you have, you know. That and when that data is so, going in, however you do that, journal entry, whatever, there's a mm -hmm. quantity field when you're entering that I, that post, correct? I apparently right, just right. missed that. Well, or is I, it only I, visible I, if you have this turned on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to you have to set the account to accept quantities, and I, as, I, as it turns out, I believe it's in here. In here, I have a GL entry to that account. There it is. And, Sweet. And there, there's the quantity that I posted, and there was a, an entry of 12, a quantity 12. Now, there's no debits or credits. This is the, and so it's not, um, when, when you turn on quantities for an account, you can enter a quantity in there. Okay, okay. And, thank you very uh, much. All right, when, when you're entering that, if you're entering the debit or credit, you can enter it all at the same time, Yes. Or you can enter this like you do at this. It's just enter it later with just the quantities. So you can do it both at the same time. So if I yeah, had a, I mean, you can, in the sales account, I have a hundred thousand dollars of sales, and I sold a hundred items. 
when I'm doing right. my journal entry, I can put both of those in on one journal entry, or is that two journal? Exactly. Exactly. No, no, I can do it on one entry. No, in other words, here's, a, here's a, my 4010 account, and I can put in sale of 100,000, uh, say 10,000, and I sold uh, 50 on them. Okay. And the quantity gets posted to, in this case, period five. Okay. Um, when I put, oh, I'm out of bounds. Yeah, that helps. Let me go back there. Uh, there we go. Got to put in a balancing entry. That would be good. Uh, let's forget what I have. Let's see. Cash. Yeah. Cash. Actually, yeah. I mean, the in both. Uh, uh, let's see. AR. Other, I guess. Okay. So you'll notice that I don't have to put a quantity. In other words, the quantity doesn't have to balance. Okay. Just the debits and credits. Right. Okay. So, and it wouldn't let me put a quantity in here anyway because account 1140 is not set to take a, take a quantity entry. Okay, good. Okay. So, when I post this now, so I, this will post the, the, the GL entry in period five and it'll record quantities as well. Now, I can post that from here. Okay. Now, um, if I were to, uh, uh, let's see, I can rec I can report this information out here. Okay, uh, I'm going to take uh, my January again, and I'm going to, and I, you know, I can put it in different places. I don't have to put it here, but I'm going to. I'm just so I can show you. And F R A M T. And we'll go to the net period, net period one. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to uh, just net period, probably. Net current period, fiscal designator, quantity. Oh, that's what it looks like. Now, uh, if I report this as a period five, it should appear. There it is. Okay. So, and the quantity information, the statistical information on, on each one of the accounts is available for both balance, year to date, and net change for each one of the, each one of the periods. So you can, you can report either one. And you can use that information as an example. One of the, one of the things that I mentioned was uh, um, employees. Well, uh, with that kind of information, you store how many employees are, uh, and just pick an account, put it anywhere you want, but uh, uh, you can use that information, use this number to calculate sales per employee. Now we're, we're or cost in, uh, per employee. No? We're in the golf area. We want to know how many golf rounds that we did. Yeah. Huh? We want to know go. how many hotel rooms that we sold by each type of category. We need a base also. For our hotel, we need to say, well, we have 150 rooms in the hotel because we're going to use calculations for that. What's our occupancy percentage? So we right. don't need an account that just is going to have quantities in it. We can have that, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. yep, that's right. So you can and, and you can build it into the financial report. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm putting it into columns and stuff, but you can put stuff anywhere you want on the report. Um, that, that being said, I want to mention something before I forget to say this. Uh, this, is what is, this is what is known as the, as the specification area, okay? And then down below that is my report area, right? Okay. Well, we make, it makes use of something called uh, Rangers, named rangers. Okay. And let's see. If I go to name manager. Yeah, F, F3. And this is in Excel now. Okay. Now right. down here, the part that really counts down here is the spec range. Right. Okay. Now what that means is the spec range is A1 to M43. Okay. 
Now, that means that if I were to go over here and put specifications out here, they wouldn't be included in the report. So if I were to take, uh, if I was outside that, that, that range, whoops, sorry. If I was outside that range, it won't include it. Now, as an example, if I want to change, and, I could, and just to show you that that actually happens, I'm going to change the spec range to be over a column, let's say, J. Okay. So what I just did was I took K out of the picture. Now, if I run this report, back to add-ins, I divide by that uh, percentage of sales is missing now, okay? Because it's not that a was, respect range. Correct. That and was my question before: is why didn't I get anything outside of that range? And that's it, because you have a range right. that it works with, and you have to adjust that. Okay, and that's that's perfect. Right. Thank you. So that, so that, and, and that's that's an important concept because uh, if you, if you insert c columns, it automatically moves the range over for you. If you just add columns over here, you have to maintain that. Yep, um, got it. In the, okay. So uh, basically, um, now, uh, let's see, there's one other thing I wanted to mention here. Now, so the concept of these account groups, and I, I, I don't mean to harp on this, but the account groups are so important to the content of the, of the report, and one of the uh, uh, real advantages of using the account group is if I design this report and uh, I include the account group 15 for my revenue and so on, and I've got some account groups for, for costs and expenses, okay. Well, I generate the, the, the income statement. If I add an additional, uh, some additional accounts later on, say revenue accounts, well, if I add the revenue accounts and I assign them to the appropriate account group, they will automatically appear on the financial statements. I don't have to change the financial statements. To I have a question on that. Yep. Can you have multiple account groups? Can one account have two different account groups and you pick your nope. account group to put in here nope. different things? Nope. The, the, account, the, the account group, um, uh, a given account can only belong to one account group at a time. Now, if I, if I move the account group, like if I were to, uh, as an example, I'll show you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go over to the, my GL accounts again. And let's take uh, account 4,000. And I'm going to change its account group to, uh, oh, let's say, cost of sales. Now, if I run this report. Right, I get, I get it. That, that just moves it over to the other. But I don't think it's right. enough. It moves, to those, which is good. Moved it down here. We have a right. format that we're using in, with the account groups, but we need a different format. I think that was my question already asked, Mark, about segments. So I just need that syntax later. Um, I don't okay. think so. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Oh, you want to do it that way? I got you. I think I'm understanding. Okay, I, I get it. Okay. Um, now the um, you're talking about the, the the segment information over here. Yeah, I just need how to, the formulation of how to say equals account group X and segment value and but I've tried it different ways and I can't get the formula to quite work but I was manually typing it I wasn't an NFR designer but if you want to build one I can write it down right well basically but let, let me show you a little something here uh, because I'm, I'm about to wrap up here because we're, we're kind of run out of time but um, over here uh, under my FR paste 
See, this account group this is uh, related to the account number itself. Okay? And over here is the various fields. Now, you notice that it has the field name. Like if I go down here, oops, there you go. Account group code, ACCT, GRP, COD. Yeah. That's what this is. Okay. Yeah. Well, among other things, I also have account seg value. Okay. Uh, and you know it has up to ten of them. Okay. Uh, now, account set seg value is a. Um, I'm not sure if it's this one or the one up above. I think I think it's the one up up here because it specifies which one it is. So, uh, account seg val 02. Let's see. Let me have a look at that. Uh, I'm going to paste that up here somewhere. Okay. Now, uh, I can say this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to take. Uh, I need it on the exact same line because I need account group 70, segment value 1, account group 70, segment value 2. So they're going to be in, in right after each other. So it needs to be on that same line of the formula, I think. Not right. as but it, well, in, in other words, I would take uh, this information and I would say, uh, down here, I would say something along the lines of and. Oops. Why didn't I get that? Uh, ACC SegVal 01, I think is what it was. Oops. Something like that. And that would be equal to, and then I would say something like, 100. I think I gotta put that. I gotta, I gotta put tw doubles in there. I think. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Let's see. Oops. What's the 100? Which is segment value? Oh, okay. I'm, a, uh, I'm still messing it. Uh, let's see. I got that, uh, and oh, there it did it for me. Okay, so the point here is that um, this, in other words, both of these conditions would have to be true for the okay. account to be selected. That's exactly, I think, what I needed. So but that's that's the basic idea behind it, and uh, so uh, it would have to be a revenue account, and or in the revenue account group, and a uh, segment one in this case. Actually, that should probably be segment two. Now I think about it. Uh, segment one is the account number. Uh, by the way, uh, that is shown in here. Segment one is the account. Segment two is the division. Segment three is the region and the end sample data. So, and it says up here the account segment. Is number even though it's named account, it's also segment one. So, uh, so I'd be uh, I'd be looking at segment two actually over here, not segment one. So, in fact, uh, let's see if that actually. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to change this to just the detail. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if this works. Now I'll give the segment ones, the 100s. Okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, I uh, I think I'm going to uh, going to sign off. It's uh, going to run out of time here, and I, I hope um, everyone got something out of this. It's a uh, it can be a complicated little bee sometimes, but. Uh, um, once you get the hang of it, it's not bad. I mean, and uh, you know some of the key concepts that I mentioned: that the rows are selecting the account numbers with the criteria, the columns are selecting the data that you're that you're putting in, um, and named ranges. Remember that 
the FR paste is, you know, kind of gives you everything you need as you're, as you're working along. Um, and um, so that's that's a uh, that's a key part of it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention real quick. If I go here, and, and again, this is FR paste now. You can actually do this too. I can say, well, I want to select the balance of the current period, and I'm saying, if I don't say what it is, it's going to select actual. Uh, actually, I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to select that year to date. Actual is fine, 2019. And I can even specify an account number. Okay. So if I said, uh, let's say uh, 4,000, I guess. Okay. I notice, see what it's building down here? Um, and if I paste that, see what I got? It actually pulls the amount instantly. Yeah. That's the that's the net year to date. Now, this this isn't specifying a period. It's it's actually the end of the, the as far into the accounting year as, as as possible. It's the ending balance right at the moment. So I can actually specify that inside of inside of a, a, a report too. In fact. I've actually uh, uh, looked, looked at some reports that people design this way. Now, the problem with designing a report like this is it's always looking at 2019. Okay? So, you know, so it's, it's, it's very complicated to do it that way. So that's why that's why they use the report specs. Okay, I guess um, I'm going to sign off here and. Uh,